Welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt and this is Secondhand Home Theater. Today we're on to day three of Alien Week, which is exploring the alien universe in preparation for the newest alien film, Alien Romulus, coming out this Friday on August 16th. Here today in this video, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna assign a rating to every one of the original four Alien films, plus Prometheus and Alien Covenant. And no, I'm not including the Aliens vs. Predator films, because those take place in a somewhat separate universe. I'm mainly sticking to the universe that was started by the original Alien film. I'm gonna go through and rate these films, and let's see which film tops out my list. Hint, if you've watched my channel, you probably know what I'm gonna pick. But stay tuned. I'm rating these alien films. How am I gonna do it? Well, I'm gonna start and I'm gonna go chronologically from the original Alien and then go to Alien Covenant. I'm going to assign a letter rating. So basically F is gonna be a terrible film all the way up to an S tier film, which is one of the best pictures you can ever see. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the films, but I'm gonna try and keep it brief so that this video doesn't run on to be like an hour, an hour and a half of me rambling about all these films, because I do love them so much. So we're gonna start with the original Alien film, the one that started it all, that created this entire universe by Ridley Scott. It's easy to say, I think a lot of people would agree with me on this. I'm just going to put it out there. This is an S-class film. This is one of the greatest sci-fi horror films ever made. This film is a classic. It's a classic for a reason. I mentioned in my previous videos, I've had a couple of them, where I talked about the Region 1 DVD, I talked about going to see the 4K restoration. Those videos will either pop in here somewhere or be linked down below. It really redefined the horror sci-fi genre. It created an iconic character in Ripley. It created iconic creatures with the alien, the chestburster, the facehugger, the egg. It built all this additional lore around the films in the franchise that maybe initially wasn't thought about as going anywhere, but down the road it evolved into what it is today. The film is also extremely well crafted from the music, the atmosphere, the tension building elements, the suspense and the horror, the twist that really the company is the real villain of the film, not so much the alien. The alien is more of just a pawn in the game and a piece, a means to an end. Really, it's only doing what it knows what to do. It isn't really doing it on purpose to purposefully harm people. The whole reason that they're in that situation is because of the company, and so Ash, and Waylon Yutani basically become the villains of the piece and kind of the villains that kind of underlie most of these films going forward. To me, without a doubt, and I think most people who love this franchise would agree, the original Alien is an easy S tier film. All right, now we're on to the sequel, which is Aliens. And it'll come as no surprise, I've posted a couple videos on my channel already about this film. Aliens is my favorite film of all time. Uh, it just barely beats out the original Alien film, only because I saw Aliens first in my childhood and then saw the original Alien later. So I have this more nostalgic connection to it. But beyond all that, this is another easy grade, same as the original Alien, S tier, without a doubt, S tier. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the greatest action, horror, sci-fi film of all time. And it established not only the world building, you know, of the characters and it expanded on everything that the original film created. It expanded Ripley's role and her character development. It expanded the world of the Xenomorphs by introducing the queen alien and everything else. And it also established archetypes that would go on through other sci-fi action movies throughout the rest of our lifetime, basically. So many movies that followed this followed so many of the character archetypes of Hicks and Hudson and Vasquez and all these characters 
that would then kind of permeate into other movies down the road. And you would see little traits of these characters come up later on in other films with other actors and other characters. What James Cameron did with this film redefined the action sci-fi horror genre, just like how the original Alien redefined the blockbuster movie and redefined a horror movie and sci-fi in its own way. Aliens just took it in another direction and completely redefined itself again. And so for me, this is the easiest rating I can give out of any of these. It definitely is an S tier film to me. And it's my favorite film of all time. And I don't think I'll ever be convinced that this is not an S tier film. So Aliens, the sequel to Alien, definitely S tier. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now we're moving in to the 90s and we're getting into Alien 3. This is one of the films, along with Alien Resurrection, I think that divides a lot of the fan base. With the previous two films, I think both theatrical and director's cuts of those films are S tier, regardless. Whereas with Alien 3, because of all the production issues and everything that went on behind the scenes with changing directors and writers and constant script changes and the studio interference, the original theatrical cut of Alien 3 is probably somewhere around a D level to me, maybe a C level at best. That's really not of its own doing. That's more of other circumstances that caused issues with it. Later on, when they released the assembly cut, which technically isn't a director's cut because David Fincher didn't want anything to do with it, but they tried to really capture his vision as best they could with the crew that did put the assembly cut together. I'm gonna say it's a B because again, the world building that comes about in Alien 3, especially in the assembly cut, expands the universe even further from the two original films. And it shows you another part of this world that you don't see in the other two films. The other two films are way more corporatized, where you see a lot of corporate influence in the universe and in what's going on. And everything basically happens around the company of Wayland yutani where in Alien 3, even though the prison planet, the prison colony, is supposedly part of the Wayland yutani corporation and kind of a smaller subset of the corporation that's kind of pushed off to the side, it really expands the universe. And you see all these prisoners and you hear about their religion that they've taken to and how it's a way more primitive setting versus what the first two films included. When you couple all that in there along with what I think is a pretty decent alien design, despite the fact that it's kind of torn on, is it from a dog, is it from an ox? You know, what kind of face hugger and how did it actually get there, which causes some problems, you know, in, in the storyline. But the actual creature design is nice. Granted, the CGI is terrible in this film. When I was younger, I thought it was the coolest thing ever, but when I look at it as an adult, uh, the CGI alien is extremely ropey and it looks like something you would have found on like an early 90s PC game. But when you get to practical effects and just some of the practical things they actually did, I feel like this film actually is a good entry into the series and really has some merits that got overlooked initially that I think fans of the franchise found later on when the special edition DVD set came out with the assembly cut. But as I got older, I will say the blood and gore effects in this film, I think are some of the best out of the entire franchise. Uh, even better than my favorite film, Aliens. I just think the blood and the gore and the visceralness that they created for this film is probably the best out of the series, in my opinion. All that being said, when you couple it all together, I think for me, Alien 3 is a B-class film. Uh, it's not near the top of the list. It's, it's definitely not going to be the greatest film in the series, but I think it's definitely better, especially when you're looking at the assembly cut, than how it was initially rated when it first came out. And so for me, it's a B-class film. Now we've moved on to Alien 4, Alien Resurrection, which came out in the late 90s. Now, again, this film holds a lot of nostalgia for me because this was the first Alien film I ever saw at a movie theater. I never saw any of the first three in a theater. I only watched them at home on a small 
TV screen with an old VHS tape. So for Alien Resurrection to actually be able to go and see it in a movie theater with my family uh, on the big screen with a lot of uh, quality surround sound and everything, it holds a lot of nostalgia and that plays into my score for this film. So overall, this film I think is probably a C-level film. So there are a lot of people in the Aliens fandom that really look at this film and they say it's by far the worst film in the series and that it's terrible and there's a lot of conversations online on different forums and things that I've seen over the years that absolutely trash this movie and say it's absolutely terrible. And I don't think that's the case, especially when you look at some of the Alien vs. Predator movies that came out later on. This film is definitely not that bad. So I think the reason this film gets such a low rating from a lot of people is because this film doesn't embrace the horror elements and it doesn't really take itself too seriously. It has a few serious moments and it tries to play some of the stuff straight, but a lot of the time it just goes and kind of adds in some comedic moments and some different things that weren't really staples of the previous movies. Uh, some of the other movies had a few comedic moments, but they weren't played for laughs. It, it just kind of came out that way because of the circumstances, but they weren't constructed to be a joke, to be funny. Where this film has a lot of jokes and visual sight gags and stuff kind of built in uh, to the story and they're really trying to make it funny. So I think that's turned a lot of people off over the years. But again, for me, not only because of the nostalgia, but because of the fact that I think there are some good moments. The underwater scene, uh, Sigourney Weaver, when she sees all the clones and has to process the fact that the company and the military has gone through all these various levels of cloning. And especially for the character within the context of the story is more or less kind of like a child because of the cloning process, she was grown in a lab and really aged relatively quickly, but her emotions and her mental faculties are still somewhat kind of on the lower end of the spectrum, like how a child would act. So her actually coming into the realization that these clones are being used and uh, mutilated and studied just for corporate gains, you know, it's really a good scene, and I think it's something that gets overlooked in this film. And Sigourney Weaver does a great job actually conveying all that emotion and really showing uh, the conviction of coming into this situation. But there's some other cool scenes and some action and some comedy and some different stuff in here. And like I said earlier with Alien 3, this film is definitely not at the top of the list. I don't think anyone's going to come out and say Alien Resurrection is the best Alien movie of all time. I don't think anyone's gonna say that. Up until they released a few of the movies later on, I could see how this would fall to the bottom of the list, but I don't think it's like a D or an F. I think this is a solid C level movie that has some good points, has some bad points, a couple good action pieces, some funny moments, uh, and then some other stuff that kind of gets lost in the shuffle. But for me, this kind of falls right in the middle. This is a C class film in my book. So like I said, I'm not, going to go into the AVP movies because they happen kind of in their own side universe that aren't really part of the original Alien franchise. So I'm not including them here, but I will talk about the original Aliens vs. Predator film in a future video that's going to be coming out soon. So we're going to jump now all these years from 1997 all the way up to 2012 when Prometheus came out. Again, Prometheus, I feel like with Ridley Scott back in the actual director's chair after all these years getting back to the franchise that really started to put him on the map and put him in an elite category for sci-fi films. This movie is, to me, I think an A-level movie. Now that might be controversial to some people. Um, I know this is another one of those kind of divided films in the fan base, but to me, I think this is an A-level film. Now, do I like the way the story takes a turn with this and then eventually with Alien Covenant about the creation of the aliens and the space jockeys and all that? Nah, not really. But for the actual film and at the time before Covenant came out and recontextualized what happens here, the level of detail and filming quality in the actual picture and the sound mix and everything 
is absolutely gorgeous in my opinion and the sound is really atmospheric and just really uh enveloping there is some nostalgia wrapped up in this for me because I was so excited to see this movie because it had been so long since a good alien movie had come out in my opinion that I was really hyped to see this and really hyped to see Ridley Scott back in the director's chair and in charge of this franchise. So to me this is an A-level movie. It has a really good cast and the themes and the storyline of Prometheus by itself before Alien Covenant, like I said, kind of recontextualizes things, I think is an A-level movie. From the overall filmmaking process, the level of detail in the graphics and the picture, the special effects, the creature design, the themes of the story, the sound mix, Everything in there, I think, lends itself to an A-class. If it wasn't for Alien Covenant, I don't think people would look as poorly on this film because I think they group this and Covenant kind of together. But for the purposes of this video and my opinion, Prometheus is an A-level film. So now we're going to go on to what was the last film up until this year in the Alien franchise, which is Alien Covenant. And as much as I like everything that they started with Prometheus, and I do like some of the actors in Alien Covenant, I hate to do this, but I think Alien Covenant is a D. <laughs> and in comparison to Alien Resurrection, Alien Resurrection is not the worst film in the franchise. Alien Covenant is the worst film in the Alien franchise, in my opinion. I, like a lot of people that love these films, I just don't like the way they took the series with David and the black goo and really just recontextualizing everything that happens in the original Alien film and re revising the history of the creature and completely changing a key moment of the original film. So because of that, I can't rate this film any higher than a D. Now, I can't say this film is an F because, like I said, the visuals are really good at times. There are some good creature effects. Uh, there are some good audio moments and audio cues and atmosphere in the audio mix. So it is a well-produced film in the actual technical aspect. And because of that, I can't say it's an F. It does have some good moments and it does have good directing at times, and some good visuals and audio. So because of that, I'm not rating it an F. But for me, easily the worst film in the Alien franchise, and to me, it's a D. So as a special little bonus here before I end this video, I want to talk about Alien Romulus. And I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of detail because I have another video that's coming out in a day or two before the release on Friday where I'm going to go into some speculation and some theories about things that I want to see happen and I think might happen. But for the purpose of this video, I want to give a pre-rating of what I think this film will rate in my mind after I see it. And I haven't watched any behind the scenes footage. I've really tried to distance myself and I've only seen one or two of the theatrical trailers and maybe like one or two TV spots. I've really tried to keep myself distance from any spoilers or any leaks or anything that they've kind of promoted in the media already or in TV spots or trailers. But from the good word of mouth that I've heard already from early screenings, and from the footage I've seen, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say my pre-rating for this film is gonna be an A. And Fetty Alvarez and everything I've seen has the ability, and it's all laid out for him on the table, to have this be, in my opinion, the best film since Aliens in this franchise. And I think he can deliver on it. And so I'm extremely excited to see what happens because I really think this could be an A-class film, and I really hope it doesn't disappoint me. My pre-rating, what I'm really hoping it's going to be, is going to be an A-class film. All right, so there it is. There's my ratings for all the films in the Alien franchise. Uh, definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know what your favorite films are, how you would rate these films in the franchise. I have a feeling most people are going to say Alien and Aliens are probably going to hover right in that S-class to A-class, and it kind of varies back and forth. They kind of go neck and neck and kind of pass each other by, you know, one and two, depending on what you're really looking for in an Alien film. 
but I think those will definitely be at the top of the list. And then past that, you're going to get a lot of conjecture and a lot of people giving reasons for different things. But definitely leave a comment down below. Let me know if you like my ratings of these films and tell me what you would rank, you know, as the best film and the worst film in the series. And with that, I'm going to wrap up. As I always do, I'm going to say thank you to everybody who's liked and subscribed on my channel, who's left me a comment, who's watched my videos. I really do appreciate it. And we're going to go on to the next video tomorrow in my Alien Week series, where I'm going to talk about some of my favorite memories growing up watching these films. And then after that, we're going to do the speculation video about what I think may happen in Alien Romulus before it releases. So with all of that out of the way, thank you guys again, and I will see you in the next video.